Hello there, it's Mike. And Katie. It's episode 190. Season 5 begins. This week on Cup of Rad. Hello, everyone. We are back. Katie is back. She's back here to grace your ears with her presence. The magnificent start of season five just starts out with a bang because, you know, you have me back. Right. There you go. I feel so out of practice of doing this. <sighs> <sighs> so, yeah. So we starting our season five. A I little cannot believe, though. Earlier. First off, season five starting. Sorry. Right. Starting it off a little earlier. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. Normally we did October. Yeah. Uh, to coincide with our actual anniversary, but we're we figured it, but we're, <gasps> we're going to be dangerous. Well, also to also to I just like the number better. It was a better way to start it. Um, <laughs> it was because 190 was supposed to be the start of season five. And that's just what had to happen. Well, 200 should have been the season five start. But well, you know what? I was going to be all like excited <laughs> about it, And then you just had to throw that one in there. Um, but you know what, though? September is a good change and you know a different start it's a new season for us you know yes i know it's still summer and i'm still living like it's summer but school starts it's a change and a shift so kind of going with that flow and uh starting a new season as well Mm -hmm. exactly exactly kind of building up to you know another another fall season filled with the stuff but still i can't believe we've actually been doing that this this for that long yeah, come, Where come October. Where does time go? It's been four years of us doing this. Yeah. It's crazy, man. That's, that's all the wonderful people we've got to have, you know, convinced to listen to us for over four years. Coversed. <laughs> Cup of Rad Cult. <laughs> yes. Well, that, that could be a thing. We could always just start a cult. Oh, we should, you would be a cult leader. Just nice little You would common, be good at it. You know, you just need someone that can garden, make beer, <laughs> coffee. <laughs> You know, just Miss Brown we're looking at you. So you know, we could we could we could do that. Yeah, a little <laughs> off in the middle of nowhere, just <laughs> we can wear robes. Have a rad commune. <laughs> just the rad commune. I mm-hmm. mean, no one expects the rad commune. Yeah, you know, it's I like not, it. It's not like it would be bright and colorful too. It would be all muted and depressed and yeah, blah. It would be like everyone can wear you know, like rave parties. And- rave parties. <laughs> Mike's like, um, whoa, I did not sign up for rave parties. Every Sunday at 8 p.m., scheduled rave party in the barn. Rave party in the barn. <laughs> Collect your glow sticks at lunchtime for um, the rave party. Wouldn't that party. be amazing? Rave party? Scheduled rave parties? <gasps> when when do we get the tickle fights? and, and yes, tickle fights. <laughs> water balloon fights. And... <laughs> I mean, there'd be other like similar, like, you know, expected cult slash commune things like, you know, yoga classes. I don't know. Like, Oh, well, I, med- I was actually worried you were going to say something like, scary. Like sacrifices or something. <laughs> you know. Blood the, omens. The, the, the regular sacrificial <laughs> like, omens and, and uh, you know, yeah. rituals and whatnot. We know with that, that there, but. Um, Every Thursday, a pound of flesh is due. <laughs> it's a full vegan, vegan uh, commune, dude. Oh, yeah, but like you could sell it to like the cannibals and the. Oh, okay. No, this is wow. Weird. This I was well, all see, like, I was like, right, and then this is what happens. This is why you can't do this because then things would just go no, real far. I, I would not go crazy with it. It would be it would be no, nice to have. A, you'd be like everyone. It'd be like the you'd Muppets. Be like super perma stone. It would be like the Muppets. And, and I found a family. Yeah, found yes. a group of people <gasps> and a family, and you know. Similar people. That, I think that sounds fantastic. You know, and it's just like, you know, electric mayhem would be like the gate feel. Yes. And it's just like, I like it. Actually, it'd be like living in the electric mayhem bus. We it, probably can only afford the electric <laughs> mayhem bus. So that's all we would have. There are six people in our commune. <laughs> a bus fits more than six people. Okay. Well, we got a lot of stuff too. So. You got, no, you just got a seat. You get one just seat. seat. That's it. Yep. That's it. I'm out. Throw up two boards, <laughs> two boards on the other side. That's that's where you lay. Maybe a net over so top of you. So we're having a traveling cup of red commune. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> Who's up for that? <laughs> okay. That's how we're starting season five. <laughs> we're starting a commune. Yeah. It's gonna be like electric mayhem. It's gonna. Be- it's okay, man. It'll all be great. You know. <laughs> Uh, 
excellent, excellent. Okay. So, yeah. So we watched uh, a documentary, uh, Inside the Mind of Cats. It was on Netflix. Uh, it was really interesting. I feel enlightened. Like every time I have spoken to the cats, I feel <laughs> like I somehow now know understand them? and know them better. That's fair. You know, I, I feel like weirdly empowered. Nothing has changed about the way I treat them or how they respond. And yet somehow I feel enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> Feels deeper. Connection I feel to the cats. deeper connection, like like more just. Wow. I actually was like weirdly emotional through it. Like it's not weird anymore. It's not like, right. Legit. Like you, you but say, I was like, like I kind of felt like crying throughout half it. Not just not sadness. Tears of absolute joy of how wondrous these creatures are. And I was just fascinated by it. And I was like, I'm just, my eyes were leaking. leaking. <laughs> uh, well, it was interesting to hear just like the idea that like they, they said that cat research is 15 years behind dog research. And kiddo was just so appalled by that. <laughs> and like, there's, there's other things to it that like play into it. But just even the idea of like the fact that they got rid of cats in the dark ages because of the witchcraft and all that, mm-hmm. which they connected to the idea that they believe that's also then the part and parcel of why the Black Plague spread, because there was no cats around to kill the rats. It was unchecked and Nature was out of balance. Yep. And that was just a wild thought. I know. Right? I, I don't know why it never occurred to me. Because I never thought that they never, had... Not the time, I never thought they realized how they, many cats they killed then. Yeah, like, but like, yeah. they Because they, they, they outlawed they, them. Yeah. They outlawed them because they and because we have also determined that Mike is a witch. Yeah, um, because so witches were very intelligent, in tune with nature. Women that, that used a broom that used a broom to make because they cared about clean houses because they understood the importance of cleanliness, which also involved having, having cats around to keep in the order mice to keep away. the clean. And I mean, one of his reasons for having a cat was to keep the mice away. And I leaned over to kiddo and I was like, dude, your dad's a witch. <laughs> That explains a lot. Burn him. Burn him at the stake. <laughs> and I'm not. A, it's not a problem. I'm cool. But uh, yep. Peace is coming together. Past life. I was a witch. Yep. I was a forest nymph. I wasn't a witch. <laughs> I was in tune with myself. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, this um, it was really interesting. The documentary, a lot of the, you know, it was fun hearing of learning about their physiological advancement and adaptations on how their flexible spine how much mm. their how spine many, is like elastic yes yeah, rub- well kiddos like you mean they have rubber bands inside of them exactly that's how they can go so fast go so fast they, because they're creating their own energy they store it and then release that potential energy into kinetic and it just goes back and forth and then like i was watching thor jump down off the cat tree and it's so weird because they to think about what would be required how much we would hurt ourselves if we landed on our shoulders on our upper body and our back is kind of bent the other way around and like to think about how they move is really incredible Mm. and and then how many muscles they can act they they actually can activate 100 percent of the muscles when they jump which is why they can jump so high it was the same ratio as if we could jump over a giraffe yeah and that was put it a whole another perspective of like how high it really is in relation to their body yeah it's crazy I want to jump over a draft. How do I unlock? How do I become muscles? a cat? <laughs> like, come on, witch. Think for it out. <laughs> right. There's your true potential. 100 percent of your muscles. Yeah. To jump over a draft in case and I'm a, ever... an elastic spine. But hey, you know, big deal. Yeah. You know, in case there's ever vampire aging giraffes around, I, I need to jump over. Speaking of giraffes, I came across because we reels just those are me one in suddenly walking in the backyard. <laughs> yeah, I wish. Um, someone built a giraffe out of chocolate, and it was the weirdest, most wasteful thing of chocolate ever. Why would you make it out of chocolate? But also really impressive because he apparently attempts to figure out everything he can sculpt out of chocolate, oh. and it was huge. But it was a full scale giraffe. Aren't they like eight feet tall? It was tall? huge. And it was solid. Well, not solid. It was hollow, like Easter Bunny chocolate, chocolate. But it was chocolate. Huh. That's an incredible waste of resources. Starving people in Africa and all. In Starving Canada and the US. <laughs> but hey. Chocolate giraffe. 
it, well, I guess you could donate the chocolate draft to the homeless to eat because that's what they need. The shits. <laughs> but anyway, so cats. Um. Uh, so yeah, that's what we did. We watched that. Then, uh, and that's apparently how cats we're... do know their names, too. Yes. They just choose to ignore you. One thing I thought that was really interesting that for my own experience growing up as not being a cat person and now everything is a cat person about me. Um, that. And I understand, I mean, it's not like you have to like cats, but the idea of assuming that cats are somehow terrible and aloof and just assuming the worst traits that some cats can be assholes. I get it. But if we just assume that and we never ourselves open up and put ourselves out yeah. there to try to, then they're just going to not care because there's no reason for them to care. But being open and, and that's for, for, for me realizing how much I was like, yeah, no, I want to do this. I want mm. to be a cat person again. Like, this is awesome. And just feel so connected and and bonded with them and realizing, like, I, I don't really have any complaints about them. Like, I yeah. don't know why I was so like, well, these are terrible creatures. Because they have right? knives for hands. They do have knives for hands. I mean, that was always a fear of mine. <laughs> but if you <laughs> um, but, you know, it's it is the you get in what you get out. You yeah. Know, well, what you, you put, put in. into it. Yeah. And well, it's like any I told, animal, there's right? dogs that are assholes. Well, right. So. And just to assume that every dog is amazing and, and cares so much is un is untrue as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, even with kiddo, he's, he's actually grown his relationship with him a lot more this summer, just especially in the last few weeks, but he's put more effort to be around them, I think. And I know, yeah. um, it helps because they were wanting to be around him, but then it's the cycle that just kind of snowballs and it's really fun and nice to see that. Yeah, so. oh, totally. Um, I totally lost my train of thought. You were going to say that's how we're starting something. No, no, that wasn't at all where I, where I was going. I very excited to talk about the cat. I know, I know. Well, it's still about cats. and then I. I, I oh, we also it. find out how long ago we've actually had, humans have actually had cats. 10,000 years. We, uh, we always thought it was Egyptian time, but that was mainly when they were really worshipped. That's when they were, yeah, brought inside. Yeah, but we, we they've been able to connect humans having partnership with cats 10,000 years ago in Cyprus, they found a, a cat skeleton. And basically the only way that would have gotten there is by humans bringing it over there. And the concept of them, you know, any animal that we've ever had a relationship with horses, what dogs, even they're tools yeah. for us. Cats were no different. They so kept they the mice, the mice right? right? When they started doing agriculture, which would then bring them in. So they said that there was most likely cats on every ship. Yeah. So, and that's how they spread around the whole world. That needs to be a thing. Why is there not cats of the Caribbean? And I was going to say, that means that pirates had cats. Yeah. And that was amazing. And so black, um, our flag means death. Like, um, no, their knowledge of cats then makes sense for it. And, mm-hmm. you know, the idea. And but they need to have a cat on board. They need to have a cat. Yeah. So. Uh, so yeah, so cats, that's, that's the episode. There's actually a cat, um, that was actually part of the Coast Guard. In, in up to 1975, it was mandatory for a cat to be on any of the ships, like the military mm. ships. But he actually, it was a whole big thing in what the 50s or whatever it looked like or whatever. He was part of the Coast Guard. He actually got printed and ID mm-hmm. and everything. Like, yeah. that's pretty fantastical, actually. Right. The fun they had back in the day. Right. You could never do that now. No, I know. Without it being old. an agenda. Uh huh. They're trying to push us like these cats. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so that was, that was a fun documentary. I know we've pretty much told you most of it, but there's a lot more interesting stuff in there. So it's on Netflix. And it still was just absolutely adorable to watch. Mm-hmm. If you, if you have any inkling to cute, adorable, fuzzy things. Yeah. Uh, definitely, definitely uh, something to look at. And all I could think about was how can I make hanging out with cats a job? <laughs> <laughs> These people are so damn lucky. Literally. They hang out with cats. Well, they're like cat researchers. I like know. Psychologists. That's and... that's amazing. Then like, go back I to wish, school. I wish Kiddo would actually be interested. He was originally we talked about being a marine biologist and because yeah. he does love his otters and, and but I think it'd be so cool to actually be a scientist that studies animals of any kind. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that'd be awesome. He should be the one that says, you know, hey, cat research is behind, so we're gonna help, you know, promote this and maybe maybe there's Maybe there's that. Yeah. Cats. Cats. So thanks for joining us. (laughs) That was season five. (laughs) 
Ah, <laughs> uh, no. We watched things. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. So, um... You bought some... You've been on a G.I. Joe kick. It's been a while since you've talked about your G.I. Joe. <laughs> um, what, what do we want to call it? Armada? I don't know. Mil- you know... The eye rolling is insane. It's, it has taken over my hutch. It has not. Okay, well, yeah, I've got to find. I got to find a place where I'm working on that. Yeah, I, I it's only been days. I know. Uh, yeah, they I, have weapons. It's mass chaos. So it's I got the action force uh, weapon packs. Uh, if you're ever wondering about them, they're still on Big Bad and they're on other collection sites as well. Uh, they're a weapon pack, and it's really cool because they fit with most uh, twelve scale figures. Uh, and it's just an assortment of, of guns. Um, they are pretty awesome. And it made the Joes look way cooler yeah. than the guns that they came with. Uh, when Kiddo was looking, he was like, you know, does any of them actually have their original weapons? And the only ones that have their original weapons are um, Spirit and the Cobra Officer. Mm. Everyone else I gave a new weapon to. Oh, except for Storm Shadow and... and snake eyes because they got their the swords, swords yeah but but yeah everyone else i gave the, these like automatic guns and all those things too and it was just like no this is this is they, they look really good yeah with it so that Valhalla verse or whatever it is oh, okay uh because they have their own like gi joe basically that they're oh, okay. making. uh so so their ads yeah, are just weapon packs so it's it was a, it was definitely a, it was like 13 bucks so like not a big investment yeah got like a ton i can't even remember how many were in the pack well There's yeah it's like I, I still don't i have ones i'm yeah, not even was, using yeah just exactly. like dump them out right well we even tried them with the mezco like harley and stuff yeah. like that which was yeah. pretty awesome uh so so i'm definitely gonna be able to use those for different things any of my marvel legends i can have spider-man with guns i don't think he has holding hands though mm. damn it huh interesting hmm. putty I will make it. Power work. Rangers do have holding hands. Oh. A couple of them actually do have trigger fingers too. That'll be strange though, because they're so like space age in their stuff though. You never know. They wander into a di- different dimension and how to use something, yep. right? Yeah. Um, I finally got um a Christmas present that my mom had ordered <laughs> me like years ago now, it feels like. Um <laughs> she says years, it was last year. I know. Um and it's a statue of uh, My Little Pony, Celeste, um, Princess Celestia. And it's, it's so it's the a pony version of her. And then there's a full like humanoid version of her. It's just not humanoid, but human figure of her in the same. So she's got this like beautiful swirling gown and this big crown. And she's just like what she would what would she would look like if she had turned into a human. And it's so pretty. And it's 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 actually quite large it's hanging out with my hot toys right now yeah we gotta find a place uh, for that because i don't know where to put it but uh but it's heavy like it's bolted into the yeah. base and everything and it's gorgeous so i know mike's gonna be taking a picture at some point yeah i gotta figure like, out how to use that trying to somehow. share it even if it's just a pretty picture to show it off because it's mm. really awesome um but that was really fun to be able to get to see because that the detail on it is just magnificent well it's definitely an art piece right? yeah and because the hair is just it's it's all the different colors of her, her pastel rainbow and it's all opulent and it, it's just, it's beautiful to see all of that detail with yeah. things. And, uh, I'm, I'm very excited to have it. So. so we had gotten a message from Theo at a saying Dragon Ball about our discussion about Knuckles. Oh yes. It apparently cracked him up. <laughs> uh, and, uh, he, uh, so what, what 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 is it what is the creature called? Okay, a kidna. A kidna. A kid. uh, kidna. Yeah, a kid. It was the kid. But it was also the uh. Yeah, it's not a kidna. I'm yeah. saying a kidna. Yeah. It's a kid. Uh, kidna. A kidna. Yeah. Uh, but he sent us a picture that they've actually got it on uh, one of a their coin. coins and all that. It reminds so. me of a. Um, Oh, I suddenly can't. A Niffler? A Niffler from Fantastic Beasts. That coin picture? Yeah. Like, the, the Echidna in real life didn't give me that same vibe, but that coin, it just... As soon as I saw it, Theo, literally the first thing I thought was, dude, why do you have a Niffler in your coin? <laughs> like, you have a magical coin, and that's fantastic. Right. <laughs> no pun intended on that one. I said fantastic. Oh, nice, 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 I nice. didn't mean to. But... Nice. Uh, Yeah. So yeah, so that was that was that was a pretty hilarious thing to 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 get those messages from him right? uh, about that. 
So it's always fun. To hear. So I would also like to then hear about your feedback on our cult idea or commune idea. <laughs> Sounds better. Um, who's all in for joining the cup of red mayhem commune? <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> Just need a piano player in the back. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> oh, good times, good times. Mm-hmm. So what did we watch over these last little while? We watched things. What do you want to start with? Um. Yeah, we, we checked out a horror movie. Yeah, we... It's a little early for it, but it was just like... Hey, you want to watch this? Eh, sure. But I don't want to think. There's always time for horror. I know. We hadn't watched one for a while. It was, it was fun to watch something different. And... Well, we had cooler weather hits. We were actually able to watch a few more things. Yeah. So, uh, so it was X. Sounds really funny, right? That was the title, X. Mm-hmm. Uh, T West? Or Ty West? Yeah, something like that. T.I. West uh, was the director and writer of this film. Uh, the movie is takes place in 79 Mm -hmm. and it's a group of people going out to make a porno and they rent out a boarding house and they're gonna change cinema man it's supposed to be a nice like like art yeah uh (laughs) yeah they're gonna make a porno and then it's the shenanigans that happen from the boarding house (laughs) (laughs) so uh this one I'd seen had gotten pretty good reviews and it had, it had come and went in our theater. We never even had a chance to go see it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was and it was on Amazon for us. So I was like, hey, we can check this out. I'm pretty sure we had some time. So, uh, yeah. One thing that I really liked about this movie. Well, there was quite a few, actually. Was it looked like an old film. Yes. It looked like Texas Chainsaw, the way it was shot and and faded and and the way the the movement of everything kind of happened it was it was kind of cool because it really gave you that nostalgic feel for Mm -hmm. yeah it didn't feel like we were watching a current um, movie by any means and then i liked too when they it looked like they were when you saw what they had filmed for the movie (laughs) in the movie yeah it had it looked like a film, old, like old screen. Yeah, it screen. was grainy and, and... And it was four by three, yeah. so you could really tell what was real, quote unquote, in the movie and what was the film that they were making. Yeah. So no matter what was happening, then you it was always Back very clear forth. that that was really cool. So. Yeah, right? So that was a really nifty thing. The other thing that I really actually quite enjoyed for the most part of it all was that most of the people were decent human beings to a point Mm -hmm. they never really were assholes so that when they start dying you actually kind of feel bad and you sit there like kind of squeamishly going they're gonna die i felt so sad yeah they're off alone now they're gonna die yeah they're gonna die whereas there's i think there's been a trend in like modern horror and slasher kind of flicks and monster where like People have become horrible. So you don't care if they die. then you're like, please, please die. And then you're sad when certain ones don't die. Yes. Right? Yes. But like this was, this was still kind of that like. That Every person. single one of them, I was sad that they died. Yeah. Like they, it, yeah, you actually. And so it allowed you to actually see the killer as a bad guy. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, thank, thank goodness you're doing the work that I wouldn't want to do. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, and we shouldn't feel that way we shouldn't be okay with people murdering people yeah um i mean i I know even regardless if someone's an asshole doesn't mean they deserve to die but (laughs) um but the they really felt like genuine people that you know you have your moments where they're kind of snappy and they're you know but yeah you felt I felt really sad yeah. every time. Well, because there's been many... All that lost potential. You have that moment of like, this really matters. There's mm-hmm. lost life here. Yeah. Where it's like there has been like even some of the modern, like the, the latest Texas Chainsaw, a lot of the people, I just, I hated them. In the yeah. Movie. And I remember you saying that was one thing you didn't like about it was because you could care less about yeah. any of the fact that they died. Yeah. Everyone in it. They were just like, they were just mean, despicable people. Yeah. But like... Yeah, these guys were making porn, but they were never yelled at the boarding house people. They and never and were... you know what's, what was nice, too, is that they weren't um, even like the executive. He wasn't sleazy to the point where he was like um, doing belittling things. Yeah. the women or taking advantage of them. They were full on 100 percent on board. Like, yeah. This is what I want to do. Yeah. There was no like coercing and, yeah. and like 
really using them. Yeah. So that was cool. I mean, yeah, I know the porn industry has that as well. Oh, yeah. But in this case, it wasn't portrayed that way. And they you know, I thought that was cool. Yeah. It just. Yeah. So that was one thing that I really thought was 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 kind of cool that it was that everybody in it, it was that moment where it was like, crap. And there was a lot of creepy like. There was there was the oh my gosh I want to like, there was some great horror the shots, shots it like, made me, and they were so simple and yet they made me all squirmish lots of like almost close calls where you're like someone's gonna die right the here. alligator oh, one oh 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 no they're not gonna die you know and I thought that was really cool but then you had to pay attention to that background you would see something moving shadows, far off yeah and I just I really loved it because it was really interesting to look mm-hmm. at and it was a relatively simple. You know, it was a simple, close, simple, small set. It, you know, it it was a relatively simple movie. Yeah. And yet it was really interesting and to it, look at. None of the, like, there was, the some of the kills were pretty gruesome. Mm-hmm. But none of them were so gruesome that it was to the point of overkill. Ridiculous and, yeah. Feeling, right? Over like, the top. Yeah, like, there was no torture to it. Yes. They, they were all quick kills. Yes. Still. Yes, right? there was and only one that was a little bit longer and it got to the point where like, oh, God, I don't want to watch this anymore. But it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't torturous or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. So it was more of the shock because it was the first. Yeah, right? exactly. So this it's is not ad- going to lie, though, that some the, the actual watching of the, the when they were filming stuff, it was like, wow, we are kind of actually watching porn right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Holy it does crap. not shy away from this. No, it, it shows it right there. And it was yeah. just like. You're gonna turn that volume down. Yeah, it, <laughs> the sound was more of the problem because yeah. there was a lot of moaning, a lot of a lot of a lot of moaning. Uh, but um, this, that might be a selling feature for you. I don't. Yeah, know, right. You know. It's like it's like yeah. Uh, this is actually uh, going to be a sequel, I guess, of sorts, because the prequel comes out here in September. It's called Pearl, mm-hmm. and it's all about the killer. Yeah. Uh, in her in her younger years. Yes. So. And that, yeah, that looks really interesting. It's a totally different vibe, and it takes, like this one being shot with a very 70s style, mm-hmm. it looks, the way the trailer comes across, as in Grand Hollywood, the, the era that it actually takes place. Yeah. And I, I think that's really interesting, so I'm mm-hmm. excited to see how that pans off the same guy can do that yeah. same magic again right? and still make it interesting and not over the over the top. Yeah. So the actress that played Pearl was also the main character in this as well. So mm-hmm. she did double duty mm-hmm. and she's going back and playing the young version of Pearl. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So. So, yeah. So I highly I highly enjoyed X. Yeah. Uh, it was an interesting slasher flick that had a good homage to the old 70s horror films. Yeah, I would really uh, recommend it. It was definitely worth it filled my cup. I was actually quite you know, happy with it. Yeah. So. Considering it was just like, Oh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. I was, I was pleasantly surprised. As I say, it was really interesting to look at. So we watched another movie. Yeah. On uh, we, Netflix. On Netflix. We had been having our list for a number of weeks now. And we just kept putting it off, but Chris Hemsworth in spider head. Mm-hmm. And so finally it was like, you know what? We're just going to do this. Miles Teller is in it. Uh, and it's actually directed by uh, the guy that did Top Gun Maverick. Mm-hmm. So it's based off a story from a short story from the New Yorker. Yeah, because we, when we first the the New Yorker logo showed up, we're like, "What?" I was like, "I was like, oh this? great, great." What'd you pick, Katie? <laughs> and then when you found out the reason, oh, okay, it makes more sense, right? So. So it all takes place at the Spiderhead Research Facility. It's a penitentiary and research facility. Um, pretty swanky uh, yeah. penitentiary. It, it it almost looked like a dorm, like, like a commune, co- like a commune even. Um, but more of like a hospital rather than an actual prison idea. But it's on an island. Um, but they, you know, they have their own rooms. They have open common areas. There's no real. It's not a prison look to it, other than the fact that they are on an island and they can't yeah, escape. Yeah, they can't right? leave. They can't see the sun. And, and uh, Chris Hemsworth plays this researcher that is they're basically testing chemical compounds on them. So they have these Moby packs on them that then put the different vials and they they test psychological effects. Um, they test. Um, they had well, basically had like a love potion in yeah. their idea, and it just kind of changes your. It's essentially more of a lust. They were trying to see if it was it could create actual love connections, but it was 
essentially just a lust one. Um, things that would cause pain, things that, you know, all sorts of Phobias. things, laughing, phobia. Yeah. So it's very extreme. Like it's, it goes right into their spinal, spinal uh, cord there. Right. So it's instantaneous for them. So they're just basically testing things out. So, um, you know, there's not, I don't really want to, because it's still rather, rather new. I don't want to give too much. Well, what did you think about it? Well, like, what um, but so I, I was pleasantly surprised with it. I, I think my first and foremost, I wanted to know what it was about. I was curious to see what the actual story was, um, other than, you know, kind of what was the grand story of things um, and the purpose of it. And it was it was a relatively simple story uh, about human psychology. And I liked the, the twist of 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 Hemsworth with his character and the situation of everything that was going on. Honestly, the first, the thing that caught me the most though was I was really impressed with Hemsworth acting. Mm. It was really nice to not see Thor. Yeah. In it, um, you know, yes, he doesn't have his accent, but the idea between all of them though, when they have these different c- compounds in them, having to change the way they're behaving, so extreme. Um, but then there is a scene with Hemsworth where he's going back and forth between things different um, compounds yeah different compounds are hitting and he's laughing and crying and freaking all, out freaking and... out and he changes so it almost looks like a blooper reel mm-hmm. and yet he's still in control he's still acting and it's really impressive so that alone was i think one thing that just kind of blew me out of the water between all of them being able to you know act in those extreme ways in, yeah. in every way so well it was nice to see because like when he was in men in black he just played thor yeah right uh this here he even the character that he was playing felt like something different but he didn't ever feel like he was overacting how i said it, how i felt with evans in the gray man yes right and because, I mean, he had he had the calm charisma and you know, he did such a good job of being manipulative. He was in a that. schmoozy business. Yeah. Business scientist. And man. knows just the buttons to push to make it feel like you're supposed to have a choice of whether you get these compounds or not. And until you say acknowledge, I can't give it to you, but I'm going to do everything possible to make you feel like absolute crap that you aren't acknowledging it. And I'm going to find all these ways to coerce you into yeah. agreeing, yeah. right? And and you know he would have his bouts of anger, and he would then he would be totally calm, and you know he he'd almost psychopathic aspect yeah. of the way he behaved, and you know juxtaposed with his partner, which was really worn down by this this whole trial, mm-hmm. and and I just yeah I, I really enjoyed the the character. It was just such a simple. Um, a simple amount of people involved really and and a relatively simple story and i liked how it developed and yeah. they did a good job so i feel like this is probably one of the most i've enjoyed a netflix original film mm. in a while yeah because especially when they've they're attached to like a big star yeah right because like you're like oh what kind of side project are you just trying to yeah well, bank on right? yeah right because like gray man I, I wasn't super big on yeah red notice i absolutely despised <laughs> right like so like you know it easily could have gone south but i think mm. this one was still so grounded more in not big overblown kind of yeah like the simplicity of it actually really helped played it played in into opinion. it right and it was you know took place in very you know not a lot of rooms and it just kind of was more of a human piece. Yeah. And it really, you know, it played out well with the idea of, you know, the, the connections on that we can make that there really is no compound. And I, I like the commentary on, you know, cause of course they were testing, it starts out with really graphic testing of this, um, N40 or whatever, um, compound that basically drove everyone to just have tons and tons of sex um and trying to see if it would create a, a love compound compound basically because mm-hmm. i mean it's always been this this we we humans we always Magic suddenly need this right? right and but the idea though that nothing is going that sex doesn't equal love the connections of talking to people and having those meaningful more of a friendships that is what actually is the basis of the love yeah and, and that was really the crux of that story was those mm-hmm. connections that we can make with people. And then also, you know, trying to heal ourselves with past wrongdoings yeah. and, and things that happened and, and mistakes. And the, the idea that we can't 
provide a compound to just prevent the mistakes because someone always has to be in control of mm-hmm. the compound and then therefore the decision maker of what things happen. And so like there's a lot of of things to think about, you know. Yeah. And so I I would highly recommend it. I was I wasn't sure what to expect. I was just kind of going in to just like let's just make sure we watch it because it looked interesting. But I was really pleasantly surprised yeah. with it. It's very psychological. Yes, very right? much it's, so. it's more of that kind of like, it's a talkie. It's not an action piece. Yes. So, But yeah, no, I got a kick out of it. Like, I actually quite enjoyed it a lot more than I was expecting. Uh, I think it was well acted and, and well done for that. So, yeah, I think it would be something to check out if you want something that's a bit more of a psychological drama. Yeah. Right? With bits of humor. So. Nice. We actually went to the theater for something. We did. It's been a long time, actually. Without like theater. buying, pre-buying a ticket weeks in advance. Yeah. We uh, bought it so the day before. We had went camping when this movie came out. And traditionally, anime movies tend to only be in theaters for like a weekend and then disappear. Mm-hmm. That's what happened with the last My Hero movie. Uh, When COVID was kind of hit and they brought it out and it was like only available, you know, 45 minutes away for one weekend only and we couldn't get there. (laughs) Right. This came out and I was like, well, we're not going to see it. We'll have to wait and buy it or something like that. Dragon Ball Super Super Hero. It's a lot of supers. (laughs) (laughs) Right. I don't know why they just didn't go with Hero, but yeah, but uh when we came back from camping, it was still there. Yeah. I'm and it was excited. like, holy crap. But I had found out after looking out that it actually had won the weekend yeah. that that week. So it probably was tentative. And then it did so well that yeah. they, they kept it. So yeah. we definitely made sure we took advantage of being able to go. Yes. Yeah, so that was really cool to go to go and see that. Uh, well, it's fun. Cause we haven't gone to an evening show for real. I don't even <laughs> remember the last time we went after it was like after, you know, three o'clock yeah and uh so we took kiddo to to an evening show and that was that was fun we literally got back from camping cleaned up and went to the movie yeah like so that was that uh so dragon ball super superhero has a long ass title (laughs) but you know what? okay so the movie is about a threat that's here on earth that basically uh, the Red Ribbon Army, if you remember them, they were all the way back from Dragon Ball. They have come back and they have coerced uh, another uh, scientist to make new androids. And those androids are led to believe that that uh, Goku and Vegeta and all them are are being controlled by uh bulma's evil capsule corp because i love that the scientist is definitely hell-bent on being a superhero he Mm -hmm. wants justice so he he had that whole well someone's willing to give me money so i will just use that and create my superheroes and just go along with that idea he wasn't the scientist i mean by some ignorance um wasn't evil himself but he had taught his androids that justice and superhero aspect um so it was kind of, it was interesting because you had these this bad guy group where you had super evil and then just smart and somewhat ignorant. Yeah. Uh, and working for the bad guy. Right. So. Right. I love that there was a recap at the beginning mm-hmm. of the Dragon Ball stuff because I wasn't around for that. And that was that was good for kiddo even, too. Yeah. So. So. Uh, so you have that going on. And so they they attack, you know, the ones that are on Earth. So one thing I thought that was really cool about this movie was the fact that Vegeta and Goku aren't the main characters of the film Mm -hmm. they are barely in the movie this movie is uh solely piccolo and gohan's movie yeah and that was a really cool switch and it was a great way of using a movie within the universe versus say it being part of the series or something like that right this this allowed them to then use to tell that story, tell that story in an hour and a half package. Well, and you know what's nice, too, is they didn't just ignore Goku and Vegeta. They gave a reason as to why they weren't there. And you yeah. still had bits and pieces of it. And you still had this, you know, mm-hmm. concept. But it was it wasn't like, well, I don't understand why they aren't there. They gave reason to it, which is yeah. cool, too. Yeah. So um, one thing that was interesting is, is that they use. uh a CG animation 
similar to like video game stuff. And when it first started, I kind of panicked. Yep. But I know I was talking to Theo and he had said he really liked the, that style of animation. Right. Uh, Cause that was kind of, a, I think it was, I was afraid it was going to be too zoomy and too like, well, the fur the opening scenes seemed too floaty, and as it yeah. went on, it was like they got perfected they got almost, better, right? Better, yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, the more I, like, cause I, I talked a lot to Theo about this, and he was talking about how much he enjoyed that. You know, Piccolo was a big part, seeing as like he wasn't in the Broly movie. Really, I really like Piccolo. He's right? one of my favorite characters. I think <laughs> I love how he's like the almost this mix between Vegeta and Goku. Mm. You know, he's still so positive. But yet, so disciplined. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I know I don't know as much about it as you, but what you have told me, I, I do love his connection with Gohan. Yeah. So I was really excited to see this, and then to see it where he's still really a father figure to him was just heartwarming to yeah. me. So. Oh, totally, totally. Uh, that's the thing that was kind of cool was actually getting to see that to show that he still was more of the father to Gohan. Mm-hmm. Right. And. What I liked, too, is Gohan, when it came down that he found out that his daughter was in trouble, he was he didn't hesitate. Mm -hmm. And that was one of my favorite battle scenes when he shows when he gets to the to the compound and it's raining and he fights the androids Mm -hmm. like the the rain and him. It it wasn't and he wasn't even trying to toy with them. Yeah. Like Goku would have toyed with them. Well, that's what you, out, yeah, you right? had said like they would he would have tried. So he was like goading them to have to make himself go stronger or yeah. something. And instead, he just powered right up and would just like, give me my daughter and just like, <laughs> right. And I thought that was like a really great moment for him. Right. Yeah. To show that even if he had been a bit absent when he was working on all his stuff, you know, that I think it shows his humanized element. Yeah. You know, that he does have more care than Goku yeah. would have had that he's it, it, that it's that less say in, in him, mm-hmm. you know, and it, I think in reality it has made him stronger. Yeah. And I mean, so much of that idea though, that they, sh- this, these concepts of when you start having the, you know, part human aspect is to, that focuses on the strength that humanity can mm-hmm. give you rather than as a, as a weakness. And I really love that type of story. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's what was, it was really nice to see. Uh, we get to see Piccolo gets a a power up. Mm-hmm. I know you love the name. <laughs> you know he reminded me of he reminded me of the demon from from uh, DC. Etrigan. Etrigan. When he had when he was all because he had his little like antenna, orange Piccolo. Orange Orange Piccolo was like Etrigan. Yeah, that's yeah. all I could think about when I saw it. Nice. I mean, Orange Piccolo is such a better name because I love how. You need to come up with a name for that power up. Orange Piccolo. <laughs> <laughs> I love him so much. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Uh, it was funny to see. And it was something to show like Beerus when Goku's fighting and he gets all over. Is it Chi- Chili or something? Like that, I think it is. When he was the dirty old man. Yeah. 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 One hundred percent. I know Theo had mentioned that too. The idea of like him being like changing his like whole demeanor, right? He was just like, hey, it was just what's so... going on with you? Like at first, I was like, what is happening right now? The animation changed to slow down. It got all like like like, all like dreamy, yeah. right? And I thought that was funny that the um, the helper person there, Weez, Weez was um, was just like, yeah, we all know he has a type. Like, <laughs> and I was just like, oh goodness, <laughs> what just happened here? <laughs> This felt like all sleazy for a moment. It did. It did. Right? <laughs> uh, well, like there was also. Um, uh, she looks like a child, dude. Uh, the cheesecake moment with Bulma. That was hilarious. that was that I was, was like, wow, that is a that's an ass. That is an ass. All the entire screen was an ass. Just shaking it back and forth all slowly. It like so funny. Like it was it, I felt a little awkward actually watching right. it sitting beside kiddo. Yeah. You're like, oh, because wow. it was like, uh, there was a group of teenagers in front of us and the, the boys were just hysterical about it. Yeah. I thought that was quite funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it turns out that the androids end up not being the final villain. Mm-hmm. There's always another boss battle. <laughs> uh, Cell Max. I think was scary. So it was basically Cell from way back when, from the Cell Saga, mm-hmm. 
maxed out. Well, unchecked violence and, and rage, basically. He's like cell on steroids yeah. who hasn't yet perfected anything, so he can't really control He wasn't finished either. yet either, Yeah, right? he hadn't sat and, uh, and cooked Stewed. as long as he should have, so he was just... Rage. So he was like he was like a Godzilla, King Kong, kaiju yeah. looking thing ripping from the earth. Yeah, exactly it. And so then the the Z fighters had to. I thought that was pretty cool, though, that the the androids were listened. They didn't they weren't so blind, full of rage about mm-hmm. it that they were just like, oh, shit, we really aren't on the right side. Like, yeah, they really were. It shows then that they were purely programmed correctly to be the superheroes to be, and to be justice yeah that the the scientist really did have good intentions yeah. with them and he had created a way to stop supercell as well or cell max um so he really did have these you know distrust of who he was working for you know he realized it too late but he it was cool that he was trying yeah. he was trying to stop them he he did his the very best that he could and I, I really I liked that, that, you know, you still had a really bad guy, but then mm-hmm. you could have that little bit of a redemption feel. And then the story of them changing and being able to help out made sense. Yeah. It wasn't forced. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like that battle with Cell Max was incredible. Yeah. All the way from like beginning to end. And like even when Piccolo had to like get large, you know, giganticize himself. Yeah. Right. Kaiju Piccolo. Piccolo. Right. And then they're having Orange that Kaiju battle. Piccolo. <laughs> I was so afraid he was going to die. It, I felt like he was getting close. I was terrified and I kept wanting to be like, Mike, they're not going to kill him, right? No, don't say anything because he won't know. <laughs> and like, oh my God, what are they? Are they going to kill him? Do they do this in this world? Do they kill people in here? Oh my goodness. Are they going to kill him? Freaking out. Freaking out. <laughs> well, then everyone joined in. Even Krillin got into the fun. and But then we actually got to finally see... And that was one thing I know Theo was really excited to see was Goten and Trunks uh, show up as teenagers <laughs> and do the fusion dance. I'm proud of myself that I knew uh, watching it. I'm like, oh, shit, something's going wrong with this one. They didn't line up perfectly. This is not going to be OK, man. How do we do the dance again? <laughs> it was like Cartman joined the battle. Yes. Yes, definitely. Oh, that was hilarious. Right. Like just a chubby little, and then then there was the the comic relief of them like showing their their butt cracks, and, yeah, and you know bouncing around, and they, they still like, became useful, which yeah. was cool, you know, like a, like a bouncy uh, ball on steroids, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, you know what? And then when when the idea that they keep teasing that Gohan's going to become the ultimate fighter, right? Like yeah, the ultimate, and with his new, they're calling it Beast Mode. Oh, okay. Uh, I honestly thought that. Oh yeah, because the red eyes, right? I thought for I thought that they were gonna bring in the whole um, GT mm. transformation with him. Yeah, with the red eyes, and I thought like the, like the close ups of his hands and stuff, and when you saw his hair grow, mm-hmm. I thought for sure that he was gonna like turn into like the the Super Saiyan four where they have like the ape form. Yeah, in human. So this the beast mode then he because of his red eyes, but then he went Ultra Instinct look to him right because he was kind of yeah. Well, he had the, he had he had the, the silvery lightning that Ultra Instinct yeah. has. So like I don't know. He, he, like he's thing, he's right? creating his own thing because like he you know never hit god modes and he like without yeah like, like, he, but i guess he seems like he's kind of trying to do his own thing yeah too, you know and um you know being off kind of doing secretive trading it feels yeah. like so what was nice too this is the thing i love is like gohan even in this mode when he reached this new level when piccolo was like you know shoot Gohan didn't say, let him go and let mm. me fight him. Yeah. Goku would have done that. Yeah. He would have been like, let him go, Piccolo. I got this. Yeah. Right. And it was. Yeah, you're right. He just, like, no, he just kept team. charging up and he would just like. Yeah. It's not ready yet. Just a little bit more. And then and then he. <gasps> and that was such a stressful scene, though. It was like, hurry up and charge up, man. Mm-hmm. And because I had that moment, though, where I was afraid he was kind of going off off the rails and getting a little too much like let me see how far i can take this yeah. and i'm like dude you're you're good you're fine he's getting his ass kicked yeah shoot your damn laser beams <laughs> and um 
fire the freaking lasers. <laughs> the freaking lasers. Uh, so, so yeah, it was it was the back and forth, right? But as you, yeah, you make a good point though. Goku would have just been like even Vegeta. Thing, I think, yeah. but I think Vegeta's. Vegeta, coming but I think that was cool. I really liked his commentary when they were training that they talked about the power of the mind and the importance of trying to stay as calm as possible and be as efficient as possible Mm -hmm. in your battle. It's not just powering through with as much strength. It's being as efficient with your battle, Mm -hmm. which means hitting the least amount of time. So if you can save your strength and, and use your, you know, not tie yourself out with, with just getting all amped up, Mm -hmm. there is, there is a benefit to that. And I thought that was a really cool growth moment for him, you know? Oh, totally. I mean, hell, even because the end of their battle was hilarious that Vegeta, you know, he actually beat Goku in the, yeah, Um, it's a, it's a end credit scene. Yeah. So, um, you know, just let that one happen and not just assume that Goku just stopped, but, uh, as he lay there and laughed. Yeah. (laughs) Right. So let him make him think that he won. Yeah, just just a little bit of a, a momentary. You're win. right. Yeah, but at the end of the day, I really got a kick out of Dragon Ball Super Superhero. I felt like it was a really good entry in it. The animation, it grew on me as a, as the film went on, uh, especially in the fight scenes. The fight scenes were stellar to watch. They were really fun to watch. Uh, yeah. And it, it just helps solidify that how much I love Gohan and Piccolo. Yeah. Uh, and it was just a breath of fresh air for the Dragon Ball universe to have a story that, you know, Goku and Vegeta didn't come in to save the day. Yeah. Right. Because yeah, they've, they've built so many characters within this universe and a lot of them just don't get any screen time. Well, I think, so. you know, because they weren't there to come and save the day, that's what pushed Gohan to power up further is because mm-hmm. he needed to yep. who else was going to save the day piccolo too yeah he it pushed him into you know unlocking um, more power unlocking more power getting i thought that was a really interesting uh play with the dragon uh balls and everything and him him wishing for this power and yet the dragon is still saying like i i gave you a little bit plus more and it was mm-hmm. still his power of will to to really see what would happen and so i thought that they actually had the opportunity to push themselves. And I think that's a good analogy for how much, if we're never given the opportunity to have to push past a barrier, we don't, Yeah, you know, until you're put into a situation you're never going to evolve Yeah, because you don't need to. Yeah. So with having them not there, it forced Gohan to, to really push back because he was fighting for something he really, really cared about. Yeah. And yeah, I love that he doesn't hesitate for all of it. Right. Um, just wholeheartedly showed up and was just like, F you, you know, give me my daughter back. And she was adorable, by the way. Oh my Pan. goodness. Yeah. Adorable little superpower bundle of insanity. So. <laughs> and then her and her like true grandfather Piccolo. Right. Well, and it was just so cute to see her connection with him. Yeah. You know, and I, I love the at the very end there when they're still powered up and she runs over to them is and the concept that she can sense their powers and sense who they are. Mm-hmm. And yet is like, well, wait, you don't look the same. Like something's wrong. Is something wrong with my my sensory powers? Yeah. And then when they change and she's just so it's just, it's it's so heartwarming. Mm-hmm. This family and this love and this, you know, caring for people. And like there's a lot of positivity for yeah. it. And yeah, I was I was super impressed with it. So would you uh, do what Bulma did with the Dragon Balls? One hundred percent. So one hundred percent. Not even gonna <laughs> pretend that I wouldn't. <laughs> in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Fair. Bring on the cosmetic surgery. Yes. So would you? Yeah. I would probably do more things that would give uh, more finance and anything. But yeah, I, yeah, I know. But then, I mean, how many times have we had unlimited money and wish fairies yeah. and plan for all that sort of stuff? So yeah, that's true. Yeah. Besides, I'm gonna look damn good. <laughs> <laughs> three dra- three uh, wishes by the dragon every every yeah. year. Yeah, I mean, it'd be fantastic, right? Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I love that she's like, don't you judge me. Like she gets, she's just so confident about it. It's mm-hmm. like, damn, it's not like she got all sheepish and was like, really going to hide it too. It was just like, yeah, this is what's happening. Yeah. Like, this is what I do. And uh, I'm not going to be sorry for it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it makes me laugh. 
So that's funny. But yeah, no, I, I gotta, really, I really enjoyed yeah, the movie. It was worth seeing on the big screen too. So yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's still playing anywhere because it's been a while now, but it definitely was a great experience yeah. and was a very, you know, kind of that like pump up after not having a lot of any Dragon Ball content for a while. Yeah. So, so yeah, so totally worth it. So we're in season five. Would love if y'all would, you know, go out and hit all those like like, share, follow, subscribe, review buttons and give us some, you know, commune love <laughs> five <laughs> stars or something. Uh, share it. Share us. Get us out there. Get us our, uh, you know, our little voices into so many more ears. Build our many- commune up. <laughs> It's like, oh my god, stop with the stupid commune. <laughs> it's a bus. We got like 30 seats, dude. Okay, okay. Better than my six. Okay. But yeah, so True. like it would be amazing to just get like the call to action. We need your help to continue to push this forward so we can continue to get through season five to to hit higher numbers. Yeah. Uh if you like what we do, please share us and and leave us reviews. Uh, cause it really will help on all those algorithms. Yes, please. Uh, get us higher up. So, uh, I think that's everything. Mm-hmm. We're going to watch, we're going to try to watch some more movies. We're going into spooky season coming up too. Yeah. If you have any recommendations, we were kind of figuring out some like crazy red Nisha. We're gonna definitely look at red Nisha cause there's not a lot of new stuff coming out. Yeah. So I think so. we found some fun and a lot of ridiculousness and it'll be great times. Mm-hmm. Great times. So thank you for joining us everyone. Have a wonderful day. And remember, stay rad. <laughs> <laughs>